Welcome to Hashtag Wednesday Weekly, a Wednesday, a weekly information session in collaboration with the voluntary sector and public sector partners. Today's session is on Rochdale Council's ambitions for social prescribing, and our host is Will Townsend. Over to you, Will. Thanks, and hello, everyone. Um, I'll just quickly share my screen and then get started. Yes, yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Will Townsend and I am a public health outbreak officer. <clears throat> um, but my role is focusing on social prescribing, so it's not the greatest job title to, to explain what, what I do and my remit. Um, but yeah, I, I work for the public health and wellbeing team in the council. And I've been in, in post now since the end of June. So um, it's still, I still feel like I'm quite new, particularly, you know, working from home and stuff like that. Um, and I suppose I say that as a caveat, just as, just in case there's any kind of questions or comments you may have that I'm not able to, to fully answer, but um, I can make sure that I go away and, and get the, the correct answers and things like that for you uh, and respond in the appropriate way. <clears throat> and sorry, I've got a bit of a cold, so you'll have to, uh, to bear with me. Um, but uh, yeah, purpose of today really is to talk about, um, you know the council's social prescribing ambitions and um and to talk about a new system of social prescribing that will hopefully provide better infrastructure and and um for uh you know all the social prescribing activity that, that's happening across the borough and yeah this is really a, a good opportunity to hear any thoughts and comments from 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 yourselves uh, as attendees and um on, on what I'm going to talk about in the presentation today, but also anything else to do with social prescribing in the borough that perhaps I've not mentioned, but is, is important and pertinent to you. So yeah, particularly thinking if there's anything we've not considered that we should have. Um, so yeah, just to, to start then, quick definition of social prescribing. So there's lots of different uh, definitions out there, but the NHS describes it um, as social prescribing is a way for local agencies to refer people to a link worker or a social prescriber. Link workers give people time focusing on what matters to me and taking a holistic approach to people's health and well-being. They connect people to community groups and statutory services for practical and emotional support. So as I said, there's lots of different models, lots of different, um, it's not just the NHS doing this and, you know, it's existed, it exists all over the place. Um, but really it recognizes that to a large extent, health is, is determined by uh, social factors and the wider determinants of health. So, you know, if you've got good housing, you've got good social relationships, you've access to, you know, uh, sports or, and, and green spaces, that kind of thing. And so it's a way of addressing that by meeting people's social needs through local services, whether that be provided by the voluntary community sector, the faith sector, public sector, or, you know, other. So as an example, a man might go to his GP and she might decide that his, his issue is more social than medical and so makes a referral to a social prescribing link worker. They then have you know, an appointment with this man, perhaps do an assessment of their well-being, discuss why they were referred, any goals and interests, things like that, before agreeing on that social prescription. So this man might have used to play football, but has been inactive due to some surgery um, and is feeling quite low because of that. And so there's, the link worker may make a prescription for something like a, a walking football class that's in this man's neighborhood. And that may hopefully meet this, this, this man's needs for um, activity in terms of, you know, fitness, but also um, social needs and, and, you know, being around other people. So and then again, you know, dependent on, on what they a particular process is for the social prescriber they may do a follow-up and do another assessment of their well-being you know manage the case from there and of course this type of thing has existed for years done all over the country under different guises often not under the umbrella of social prescribing but i think there's been a recent kind of um push behind social prescribing and, and i think that's useful in as much as it provides that a, an umbrella term under which all of this important kind of work can be coordinated and there can be shared learning and innovation can be um, can happen and that kind of thing so it's a kind of um, a rallying call I suppose is why it's a, a useful term <clears throat> and yeah it's recently been prioritized and pushed by the NHS and the government so you know it's a key part of univised universal personalized care and it's seen as a key to preventative health um, and, and I think particularly from the government's perspective it's also seen to be potentially cost saving so you know a lot of people are going to the GP for issues that aren't medical they might be going because they're feeling that isolated and um, 
that's something a social prescriber can help with more so than a GP perhaps. Um, and of course, support people affected by the impact of coronavirus and you know uh, people who are having to be on waiting lists for much longer than they should be and people who are reeling from the effects of shielding for for many months and the many many things that come with that so yeah it's all stages of someone's journey from referral to appointment to involvement in the community and, or whatever it is that we're interested in um, from the public health uh, perspective so to just contextualize why you know we have a vision and ambition for social prescribing we want to better support the well-being health and happiness of residents in rochdale which uh, i think we all want to do um and as it stands in rochdale what we have is a a number of really fantastic social prescribing individuals and, and uh, teams but they sit across <clears throat> different organizations different departments um so we have, for example, the social prescribing link workers in each of the um, primary care networks in Rochdale. We have community connectors who sit in adult social care. There's um, health and wellbeing workers who work for Living Well. There's a link worker who works for Rochdale Mind. There are, there's going to be um, a young person social prescribing link worker who's going to be working for Hotwood College at some point soon, I think. There's all this stuff going on uh, and it's all really great stuff, but they're all using different referral pathways. Um, there's no kind of central point of access for social prescribing and uh, no central point of access for triage. There's different systems and processes being used, whether that be for case management, for data collection, for recording interventions. In some cases, there isn't any kind of obvious recording and data collection. People are using different service directories or none at all, so that might make it difficult for you know yourself as a community organization to put your name on the map if you wanted to receive referrals, you know. Um, and so really what it means is that while there is this great social prescribing work going on, it is it's not particularly coordinated and it's a bit disjointed across the borough. So there is some confusion sometimes amongst residents and service providers, you know, how to access this support. There's possible duplication maybe people falling through the gap and us not knowing where all the holes are in the provision of services from public and voluntary sector. Um, <clears throat> and also as a result of this lack of uh, a borough-wide coordination and not knowing who's referring when for what, or the impact it's having, disparities in who's benefiting or not from accessing these kinds of services. We can't evidence whether social prescribing is doing what it's supposed to and whether it's providing that value for money. So really what we want to do and, and this is building on the success of you know the, the community response with coronavirus and things like that and the momentum that exists there is to unify and bring the various parts and actors involved in social prescribing together and develop a more clear borough-wide uh, social prescribing model that will offer that central point of, of access and a clear offer of support for people who are struggling to cope so yeah how do we you know, hope to achieve this and, and, and provide that more coordinated system. So we're through a, a procurement from Greater Manchester, we have access to a digital social prescribing platform called Elemental, and that will provide hopefully this infrastructure for, for maximizing the impact and availability and efficiency of social prescribing and allow all those involved in, in social prescribing to work across the same secure system to deliver those services. So it offers a standardized route of referral, standardized system for case management, a shared directory of services that all the social prescribers can use where organizations such as yourselves would, would be able to sit on there <clears throat> and provide a streamlined and better coordinated processes for all stages of, of a referral journey for residents and link workers. And it also offers access to standardized data and wellbeing tools. And this is what, uh, you know, really uh, interests me particularly is, you know, being able to, to um, track progress and outcomes at an individual neighborhood and borough level for the people who are using you know, the services. And there's also you know, reporting capabilities, so we're able to identify those gaps, as I mentioned, and identify where help's most needed. Also identify where strengths are as well, which is obviously important, and, um, and that will hopefully allow for more strategic commissioning and, and capacity developing of the voluntary community sector, but the public sector as well. Um, so, this is just a, a little diagram to show you know that all stages of an individual's journey can happen through the system so a referral can be made through you know an online portal uh, you can type in you know the person's name why they're being referred etc that would go into the system and would be picked up according to agreed criteria by a relevant 
social prescribing link worker they can have that appointment with that person take a well-being score which as i mentioned is would, would allow us to measure progress and that can be aggregated um and then yeah through through that directory of services that's inbuilt they can generate that social prescription that can go straight through to um, yourselves as a as an organization so you, you pick up emails within like a few clicks of a button from a link worker and it would say i'm referring oliver he's 80 he's been referred for this issue and this is why he's um yeah expect him to come this thursday for example and then yeah from there the the, the whole kind of process can be managed and I suppose it's, it's, it's worthwhile to say that a key feature of this is, is, is the involvement of the, the council's contact centre. So you, you may or may not know, you know the role they played with coronavirus in terms of um, being able to triage people to, to relevant um, services in the community. So they may have called up and said, I need food, a uh, food parcel or something like that. And they can triage them through to the relevant um, place. And that that's ongoing. But we're hoping to build on that and, and for the council contact center to be able to play a social prescribing and a triage role so we hope that they'll be able to receive referrals from individuals themselves or from organizations you know maybe the police the ambulance service who knows um and they can make referrals through to the contact center and according to criteria can triage um that case to a relevant social prescriber let's say it's somebody who works for living well or your trust um, and in some cases, we want the contact centers to do the, the social prescribing themselves, and, and through that system, they can, uh, you know, uh, then link them through to the to the relevant launching community, faith and social enterprise uh, service or public sector service. Um, and we're yeah, we're looking at you know providing training to the contact centre and having good help conversations with people and um, being able to provide that support to, to people who need it. So. Just some kind of other benefits for the voluntary community sector organisations who um, who could be involved in the system. So you could have a login. So there's potential to upload services, activities, events, etc., to a directory of services that is accessed by all the social prescribers. So that can increase the visibility of the services you offer, and 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 hopefully you can reach more people and more of the right people. <clears throat> Um, and I'll touch a bit more about about that later because it links in with you know kind of quality assurance of services and that kind of uh, important thing. Um, can receive referrals directly from link workers through the system. So this is, as I mentioned, a few clicks of a button for a social prescriber, and they can generate this email um, that provides you know various information that would be important for you. So contact number, the person's address, why they're being referred, their age, etc. And of course, only with this person's consent would that information go through um <clears throat> and yeah this also allows you to collect you know data on demand for your services and the effectiveness uh, of your services as well and that can be used in you know reporting and further funding applications um that you may put in you know pr proving how successful your your services have been and then uh, the other bit is that you can track attendance uh, of, of people attending who've been referred to you which then the the link worker can see that and 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 um that's obviously really, really, really useful. <clears throat> and there you can see there's a bit that says capture data to the right of the arrow. And again, you can see there, I think, some data in terms of um, the effect that your service has had on, on that individual. So as I mentioned, it's important that in with this, we, you know, you consider quality assurance, really important that people who are being referred through to a, an organization have the the appropriate you know procedures in place depending on what it is they're they're providing and doing and so this is kind of an open discussion and just we've, we've had a few discussions on this and so it'd be great to hear any any thoughts that people have but discussions so far have kind of centered around um giving this access to logging in and being able to upload your own events and services etc being contingent on meeting agreed criteria and we'd hope that this would align with the quality and impact award from action together so if you if you meet that criteria so it's you know things like adequate safeguarding policies and procedures gdpr compliance health and safety etc um you can then be given access to the system and benefit from all those things that i just showed and, and you'll be marked in in the directory of services as having met that now that's great and really good but um you know what about those newer small or less experienced service providers you know um who <clears throat> we don't want to prejudice them we don't want them to not be able to become um 
uh, users of the system and, and be able to provide the important services that they do. So uh, one thing that we've discussed is that they can still be added to the directory, but that would be at the discretion of social prescribers. And it would mean that you wouldn't get the login, you wouldn't be able to receive those referrals. So there'd be, have to be a different referral route. Um, <clears throat> and I think that would also perhaps add a good incentive to strengthen organizationally and work with action together to, to get that quality and impact award. So um, hopefully it, it would be much more carrot and stick and it would just mean, um, you know, you'd still be able to, to um, be on that directory of services. You just wouldn't be tagged as having met that agreed criteria so that it's, you know, it is at that discretion of, of the professional link workers. Um, so, yeah, and uh, uh, just this last slide. So this is obviously like less about elemental system and more about what that could allow us to achieve in terms of the a better um, eco uh, uh, social prescribing ecosystem and landscape. And um, so it's important that you know we we seek feedback from from all that relevant stakeholders and obviously extremely important stakeholders are voluntary and community of faith and social enterprise organizations um, who will hopefully receive referrals from social prescribers so again it would be great to hear any thoughts on this but uh you know a couple of thoughts i've had would be you know a biannual survey so once every six months send out an online survey where you can um you know feedback and say you know i'm, I'm receiving too many referrals i'm not receiving enough i'm not um you know, just provide any any sort of feedback and, and also perhaps um, forums like this where there can be a feedback workshop and focus group so that this continuous consultation on, on this system and um, being flexible with it and adapting with it and, and not just being this rigid thing that um, that can't change if it needs to. Um, so I'll stop there for any any points and questions. As I said, it doesn't have to be on anything that I've, I've done in the slides. It can just be more generally, and I'll do my best to answer. Um, uh, I suppose anything, uh, what I'd be interested to hear about would be um, also any any kind of equality considerations that, that has popped in, into your head with all this. You know, it has the potential to benefit everyone, um, but that's not to say that it, this new setup might put up some certain obstacles for, for, for certain people. So again, I'd be interested to hear about that. So I will um, stop there for questions and comments, Michelle.